Welcome back to the Insight Channel, your user's guide to living life with vision loss. I'm Jazz, I'm a blind occupational therapist, and I'll be your guide. Connecting with nature can be invigorating, and it's something you can enjoy even with vision loss. Today we're gonna to talk about gardening, a full body experience that stimulates all the senses and gets your body moving. I am here today in front of my garden that's connected to my patio, and all these plants are ready for their spring makeover. So as you can tell, it's been a long winter. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to weed the garden, transplant some plants that don't seem super happy right here, put them in another spot, and then plant a few new plants and lay some fresh mulch to freshen it up. So today I'm going to give you a few tips and techniques to how you can enjoy gardening if you have vision loss. It doesn't have to be complicated. It can be simple, like this little garden. Step one, choose plants that make you happy and stimulate all of the senses. If you have some residual vision, then you're going to want to choose plants that have a dark leafy foliage with a bright bloom that contrasts in color and pops out, like whites or yellows or pinks. If you don't have any vision, you may want to focus on plants that are more fragrant, like roses or gardenias, or maybe even plant an herb garden. If you um, are blind, you may also enjoy planting things that are fun to touch, like blooms that are real soft and velvety, or you might like the sleek elegance of a calla lily, or you might like the rubbery texture of a tomato or a pepper. Planting edibles is a great way to enjoy gardening because then you can enjoy the fruits of your labor with your friends and family. And in the end, don't forget sound. You may want to plant plants that will attract birds or bees, or you can add a water feature or chimes to your garden, so all the senses are happy. In my garden, I planted pentas. Pentas are a flowering shrub, so they're very simple to maintain. They're in deep shades of pinks and reds, which are my favorite colors, and they make a great backdrop for my fountain that's in the middle. Step two, be sure to spend time in the area where your garden is so you know the sun's pattern. Morning sun, is a lot less harsh on your plants than the evening sun. My garden here gets the morning sun and the pentas absolutely love it. Step three, do your research to make sure that the plants you choose are going to do well in your location and according to the sun pattern. There are many apps that you can use or online resources, or you can go talk to a master gardener at your local garden center. Here in my little garden, I planted a new variety of hydrangeas and they just don't seem to be thriving right here, so I'm gonna relocate them to another garden today. Step four, be sure that you get to know the feel of your plant so you can tell the difference between what's supposed to be in the garden and what's not supposed to be in the garden. So in this particular garden, I have shrubs planted and they of course are gonna feel like little sticks going into the ground, which is a much different feel from weeds, which are gonna feel more rubbery or feel like soft leaves growing up. So once you find a weed, it's easy to tell the difference and you can pull them right out and get rid of them. Phew, okay. So the garden has been cleaned out and new mulch is put down. The plants have been relocated and uh, moving on to step five. If you're going to put new plants in, that's where step five comes into play. You wanna have some symmetry to your garden so you can keep track of what is planted where. You don't need to use a measuring stick or be that precise with your measurements, but you wanna be in the ballpark so it looks nice and it's easy to keep track of. I have here a wrapping paper tube that I use to measure the distance between the base of each of my plants. And so I know that the distance between each of these bushes is about the length of the tube minus an inch and a half. So I'm going to put it up against the base of this plant to find a ballpark of my starting point right here. And now I need to know the distance from the plant to the edge of the garden. So I'm gonna use the same paper 
same tube. Ah, it's about this distance, which maybe is about eight inches. So I'm going to hold it on the edge. Ha! Ah, and I just happen to be right in the perfect spot. And it's right by the soaker hose. Hallelujah. It's a good day. Okay. So I am going to... I'm going to clear the ground a little bit with my hands. Then I'm going to get my shovel. Dig a little hole. Doesn't have to be too big. The plant's not that big yet. Okay. So I've got a nice hole there. I'm going to put some Osmocote in it. Always good. Make sure the ground's nice and fertile before you put a fresh plant down. Okay. And now, take my pretty little, pretty little penta. Off to the side. Into the hole. Now the hole is wet. It rained last night, so the ground is good and wet, which is always best for new plants. So now I put the pretty little plant in the ground. I know the soaker hose is close to it, so it will get good and watered. Now, because it's such a tiny and tender little plant, I don't want to accidentally step on it because truthfully, at this size, I can't really see it. <laughs> so what I did was I took a plastic cup and cut it, cut the bottom off and cut it up the side so that I can use it as a little bit of barrier around the base of the plant. Okay, this will make it a little bit easier for me to find and identify. It's just temporary while it's getting established. And that's step five. Voila, the garden is done. I cleaned out all of the, the weeds, laid fresh mulch, took out the plants that didn't seem super happy where they were and relocated them and planted some fresh pentas that will grow up fairly quickly in the next couple of months. So now you have insight on how this works. Anyone can garden with any degree of vision loss. You just have a few simple tips to follow. Be sure that you pick plants that are right for you, your interests, and your sensibilities, and fit the location where you're planting them. And remember, any activity that involves all the senses is going to give you the best benefits for your physical, mental, and emotional health. Thanks for joining me today. It was a busy day, but a real good one. Don't forget to click the thumbs up at the bottom of your screen if you like this video. Share it with anyone you know who has vision loss. And subscribe. Click the little bell icon next to it if you'd like to receive notifications on other episodes in the future. If you have any comments, questions, or ideas for future episodes, reach out. I'd love to hear from you. Remember, my job is to help you to make this look good. So no worries. You got this. See you next time.